Hi, I'm Edgar James CPA. I'm here to speak for the Community Financial Literacy Project, uh, an item that I founded and uh, with the assistance of uh, my producer here, uh, Black Sparks TV. And we're back to speak with you a uh, little bit more on personal savings and personal debt management. Uh, we had spoken before, I uh, suggested some reading uh, from The Richest Man in Babylon by George uh, Clayson and uh, hopefully uh, you've had a chance to uh, get a hold of a copy or uh, at least uh, start doing some of the things that we had mentioned. But anyway, we're going to recap some of that. We had a philosophy going where one would gather 10% of everything that they earned for themselves right off the top and 10% would be allocated for your charity and giving and for the use of others who have a need of the resources that you have. And then 80% to go and do those things that we have to do to meet our obligations uh, debt-wise and otherwise financially. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, what wasn't mentioned uh, perhaps was the methods of getting to 10%. Uh, uh, various individuals have different uh, availabilities to them. Uh, if it's uh, simply working and you don't have the availability of a, say, 401k plan or any type of deferred compensation where you can allocate the 10% right off the top tax-free or tax-deferred, I should say, uh, then you would simply take your savings account or your uh, paycheck and allocate 10% of what would be your gross pay from the amount you see now as your net. So in essence, you would be arriving at home uh, minus your 10% that went to the savings account. Uh, many uh, employers have systems that allow you to do a direct deposit to your savings for that allocation. So those are some of the methods for doing it. And then another reason that I wanted to get back and readdress this uh, section was because I wanted to address the point of why would you want to do 10%. Uh, we talk about accumulating wealth and uh, that being the desire of many. Um, a wealth can be accumulated in many different ways. We each possess a certain amount of human wealth anyways. If you wake up every day, uh, you have some human wealth and you're uh, certainly good for that uh, to the extent that you wake up every day. Uh, when we want to have financial wealth, uh, there are certain ways that you can have it. To have cash in a savings account is a customary uh, way of doing it. Uh, I use that as a base uh, because it's easily understood and one can say to take 10% of an item and place it in an account is much simpler than some of the other things that we'll go into a little bit later in some of the later segments. Okay, so we start that way. It's either the savings plan or the 401k plan or a derivation thereof. So when you have those items going on, you're accumulating monies uh, over a period of time, and they do accumulate pretty quickly. And you have to consider the other financial uh, goals in life. Uh, many people endeavor to purchase a home or several homes or uh, a business. Uh, these are the things that are suitable uh, for use of the 10% savings because it essentially is a parlay of that money into a, another type of savings, which is an investment or a business. So uh, I look at them uh, as equivalents, though you have a certain risk factor that you don't have in a savings account when you open a business or you take one of the other stock-based uh, 401k plans, for example. Uh, those have a certain amount of associated risk with them that has to be managed uh, by you. So uh, if you look at the simple piece, 
uh, we get to a point where we have families and children, expectations, uh, future college, uh, those types of items become a concern. If you have an accumulation in your 401k plan, one way to solidify that is to use that money, or a portion of it, I should say, as a down payment on your home. Uh, it's one way to solidify that amount, and the appreciation on the home would probably be greater than the appreciation in the 401k plan. And because it's your own money that you're borrowing, you're simply paying yourself back through payroll tax deduction. Uh, so that isn't a burden at all. You get a win and then another win by paying yourself back. It's like guaranteeing that you're going <laughs> to fund your own success. So one could use those tools to do the preservation of what it is they may feel a little funny about in a 401k plan. Uh, there are only a couple of reasons why you could even get money out of one until retirement anyways. And a home purchase is, uh, your first home purchase at least, is one of those mechanisms. So that puts you on the path to accumulation of wealth if you would leave it in the 401k, that's going to accumulate to a great piece as well, which is one of those factors in the accumulation of wealth. Now, what happens when someone has all of a sudden a windfall uh, come in, sell a great product, a uh, big commission on a sale, or anything that could produce a, a, a block of cash at one time? Um, many suffer from what's called pent-up demand. And when you have the ability to satisfy that pent-up demand, it can lead to a, a lot of things. You can first squander a lot of the cash on satisfying those demands. Uh, now, if some of those demands turn out to be vices as well, you could get uh, a multiplier effect from having misused what would have been good fortune to do some unwise things or make unworthy purchases or uh, get an activity that is unbecoming of uh, good people. Uh, so you have to find out what it is you're going to do with the wealth once you accumulate it because to simply have a plan for accumulating wealth doesn't say anything. If you're not going to give some of the money away to charity, um, uh, well, you can say that too. It's op an option. Uh, one should, if we go by the principles that we're speaking about here, at least based on our uh, reading of The Richest Man in Babylon, uh, one would set aside some money for charity. You also have to understand that uh, all the methodologies used will put you in a position where you're probably earning some taxable accrual on your principal. So, a 401k plan, for example, when you accrue a million dollars for retirement, and many people will do that, uh, you accrue a million dollars, you have to take into consideration, uh, unless you're a civil servant and you're uh, uh, not taxed in your state, the tax effect of the deferred compensation uh, will be substantial. So. Uh, I use a 40% barometer. So if you accrue a million dollars, you actually have 600000 to use for your betterment. You have to understand that prior to getting to your tax guy's office and being surprised that, you know, what was a good plan has been eroded without your knowledge uh, or without your uh, adequate understanding of what you were notified of. Um, so those are some of the considerations to personal savings because in addition to accumulating a personal savings, um, I would hope that it could be preserved and parlayed into future use for other generations. Uh, that's really the, the point of it. Uh, to have a good life now while saving for the future is what a simple formula for life will allow. Um, uh, um, so, to that end, we would look to have all those things that we want to satisfy and be entitled to once we had some what we call money 
uh, if you want to purchase whatever it is, you'd be entitled to do that. But hopefully it would be those things that would have some legacy value. And uh, some of the basic investments, a uh, home, uh, uh, a vacation home, uh, a, a building for a commercial enterprise, uh, all the things that are, are perhaps lacking in your portfolio, we look to uh, put those into that 10% that we're looking for. Uh, that's how we capitalize and do that. Uh, we haven't mentioned the effect of pooling that 10% among family members when everyone gets on the plan to do it. Uh, that allows you to rise even faster. So if you see other communities who seem to be rising faster, it could be because they would pool their uh, 10% <laughs> together and uh, purchase those items that are necessary for the accumulation of wealth. Uh, it's real simple. Now, one part of debt is an issue. It's the repayment of the debt. It's called debt service. So if you owe credit cards, the credit card wasn't the problem, nor was the, the fur coat or the pair of slacks or whatever. Uh, those things weren't the problems. It was the having to pay it back and not having the money. That would have been the problem. Uh, and in a credit card sense, those are absolutely uh, not necessary most of the time. Uh, they certainly aren't worth it. If you consider a purchase today on a credit card might be paid for next year uh, where you don't pay the amount off immediately. Uh, if you can't afford to do that, then it probably means that you can't afford to put it on a credit card at an extremely high interest rate. Uh, one of the reasons I harp on this point is because the only thing happening is the enriching of the banks who issue the credit cards at these exorbitant interest rates to people who should be simply putting their money in a savings account instead of purchasing a blouse or uh, a suit or whatever it would be that you probably could have lived without until you accumulate the wealth that's necessary for you to buy several of those items, perhaps. Uh, that would be the way that I would advise one to pursue their accumulation. Uh, if you have to be caught up in consumerism, uh, you're not going to be a prosperous investor unless you have such overflow in your income that you can purchase all those things you like and uh, still prosper with the savings account. Uh, if that's the availability, then that person can enjoy all the uh, uh, doings that they can pay for. Uh, simply put, though, most people who uh, work uh, <coughs> professions or crafts or uh, these items that will have you, uh, particularly if you're self-employed, uh, we get to that point, Self-employed people really have to do the 10% because after business expenses, there's never anything left. So you have to have a savings that allows you to put a certain amount of the uh, income that's earned aside uh, for the betterment of the future. Uh, it's usually a, a, a situation that people who are surviving don't think they should think about. Uh, some feel they don't have enough money to save. If you have any money at all, you have enough to save. Uh, I can't say that you should do 10% across the board. It's a barometer that I think happens to be a pretty good one. But if you can't, do 2%, do 3%. Do something to preserve some of what you have now for later. And I say that in a sense uh, that those who feel that they have to pay everything that they earn out should consider that they're not uh, getting ahead anyways and should be mandatory that they take some for themselves and pay short on some other item or expectation. 
uh, that would be the way to cut into a budget and find those uh, often thought to be needed uh, items that are simply uh, wasteful and could provide for the success in a financial plan. So we want to be very uh, diligent and uh, it's a, a pretty disciplined process when we speak of finance because most are trained to spend the money that comes in to them on uh, some consumer related items and necessities and needs that are created often by the media and other outlets. So we want to take this uh, in a real sense to know that our personal finances and our savings and our investments and debt management have to be up to us and if we are in debt for items that don't pay a return on investment to us then that was debt that wasn't well uh, taken. Uh, one could switch that to the debt on their own business production if a $30,000 credit card was a $30,000 investment in a business, look at the difference that could have occurred. You can't get anything out of nice shoes and uh, 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 clothing and uh, nice gifts and uh, trips to Cancun and things like that. If those things are what's driving up the balance on your credit card, then that's the difference in your uh, wealth uh, building and those things can be easily cut. I'm not against uh, going to Cancun or uh, Rio or wherever you want to go, uh, but if you can't go there and come back and have the same amount of money available to you that you spent on that trip, then that wasn't a good trip. <laughs> it wasn't a good financial uh, decision. So. Uh, Without any further criticism, take a read of The Richest Man in Babylon and we can, you know, get some understanding of what I'm saying to you. I have the benefit of having read the book 25 years ago and uh, I'm just recommending it for everyone, particularly children. Uh, all the children should definitely read this and make sure that they understand the principles put in this isn't to insult uh, those who are poor. Uh, but there are reasons uh, why uh, uh, one would be poor, and uh, most of them aren't good. So let's look to uh, further our doings and financial prosperity through a look at our own personal impact on our savings, our debt management, and our uh, personal development financially. Thank you.